So what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today, I have a legend in the house. The street ball legend, the professor. How you doing, professor? Oh, bless, man. Thanks for having me on. Hey, man, appreciate the time, man. This is the professor. He's not ready to go home. Professor, hot sizzle. Oh, professor, professor. So how did the idea come up for doing a YouTube channel? Um, you know, initially it was just marketing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I noticed YouTube was getting popular in the early 2000s. And it got to a place where people were booking me based on some fan-made YouTube videos okay. they were seeing. So I figured, you know, why not have these come, you know, directly from me and uh, compile clips from the ESPN show Streetball and to make some, some not fan-made mixes but more professional-looking mixes from the ESPN show. And so it was just strictly as marketing okay. to spread the word because in 2008, and one stopped being on ESPN. So I needed something to parlay, and why not digital? Free distribution. And you know, this was 10 years ago, but I saw the digital game was on the rise. And I just noticed everybody was looking at the site called YouTube. So I figured, why not have a channel? So we started just for marketing, and that's how it came about. And one of your most popular video is where we're where you dress as a Spider-Man. Yeah. Your first Spider-Man video, I think, it hits 34 million views. Uh -huh. And uh, can you share with my viewers, like, uh, why you decided to dress as Spider-Man? Um, it basically, it wasn't even my choice, to be honest. I was with a, a friend of mine who's really good at marketing. His, his name is Robert Hernandez. He, uh, he goes by him, Steph Reed. He, he's still my partner today on a lot of the projects. He's very good with marketing, and we were trying to figure out how we could work together and we were also trying to figure out how we could go um, viral with some video stuff that would reach viewership in the millions as opposed to just the hundreds of thousands. So my best video at the time I think had like maybe 1.2 million but then after that it was like 250,000 and below. So he was up on cosplay and he understood that cosplay was a really hot thing so he said why don't we come with this concept that'll just be a prank video? Okay. So, so part one, people don't know, that's just a prank video where oh, yeah, prank. you say you dress in a cosplay, you know, superhero outfit that covers your body, which is Spider-Man, and go play people one-on-one -on -one and it'll sort of be a mystery and not know who it is. So we did it. I think it had like 8 million views in a week and then 15 in two weeks and slowly been going up since then and, uh, you know, we definitely praise God for the, the viewership and the opportunity but it kind of like burst the... Uh, YouTube is being not just marketing but a business. So you came to the court already dressed up, so nobody knows it was you. Yeah. So Rob, he went ahead of me with his camera. Okay. He acted like he was at the park just playing. Okay. And then when I showed up, people were giving me weird looks. I think some people thought like, is this dude on drugs? <laughs> we were like, what's going on? So they were about to check up, play King of the Court, and I was like, hey, you mind if I get in? And they were like, yeah, I guess. So I checked up. Funny enough, I probably played for 20 minutes, but I didn't miss one shot, and every move I tried went through. I can't imagine playing 20 minutes in a Spider-Man suit. That was yeah, really that's all I got, you know, because if I go past that, I'll probably pass out or something. <laughs> Breathing through the materials. Your favorite uh, street ball player of all time? Um. I can't really say one, I, I have a few. You know, like for me, first being a fan of the N1 Mixtape Tour, I love watching Scoops My Lou, the N1 Mixtape Volume 1 was the first one to come out. Then Hot Sauce on the, on the N1 Mixtape Volume 3, AO. Um, so you got a couple, you got a Current day, I'm a bone collector, somebody I played with for a lot of years. Um, yeah, it's, it's really hard for me to say one player. During your prime prime days, yeah. does NBA ever cross your mind when playing the NBA, like Skip My Lou? Yeah, of course. So originally, I was always trying to make the NBA, and I was in junior college. Played one year of college um, before I started playing on M1. But in my mind, I still wanted to make the NBA. Okay. So uh, I was still. Here, here's the truth. The reason I, I didn't, I don't believe it was my purpose, my calling in life, to be honest. But at that time, I was so content with playing street ball that I wasn't training like I was supposed to in order to make the NBA. So by the time I got serious about it and trained the way I was actually supposed to, I was already 25. 
So, or 24 years old. So I've been playing pro, I played the ABA, the IBA, the CBA, all over the place. And by the time it got to a point where I realized the NBA, the reality of me making it would be this long route, I had to go overseas, hopefully make a roster. I decided to build upon what I had already built in street ball. I'll continue that, and I feel like that was a purpose for my life. So you can tell my viewers where your channel is called so they can subscribe? Absolutely. Check out that YouTube.com forward slash Professor Live. Check out Instagram, Global Hooper, if you get a chance. So Indonesia, make sure you subscribe to his channel, okay? Okay. Okay, that's all guys. Thanks again, Professor. For hey, your time, man. Hey, I really appreciate it. Right, God bless. God bless, too. So I'll see you guys on the next episode. See you guys.